guess where we are? If you guess Minnesota, you are correct. So let's go ahead and put our sticker on. Minnesota. Oh, and wait till you see us go to the top of the United States, the lower 48th. On this episode on Proceeding Onward in America. This is how we're getting back into the USA. Or if you're stuck over on this side, you can go back to Canada whenever you want. Or you can drive across the icy road. Get to the resorts on the other islands. This is pretty amazing. I'm doing fantastic. I'm trying to get back in the Canada side so I can go back to the US side so I can get back home. Canada. All right, let's uh, show our passports. It's a lot less busy over here than the other side. America, go to Canada to come back to America <laughs> all in a couple hours. Bumpy road. Very bumpy road. We're glad we don't have Woody with us. But if you come here, don't bring a trailer. Unless if you plan on staying in Canada and just leave it in Canada at the park. But don't go from one border to another border. Definitely since you have to go through the border control several times. Yeah. Okay, so apparently there isn't another Border Patrol. There were signs for it. But we know we're back in America. Because the sign says that we've got to go 25 miles per hour. Yeah, so all the speed limit signs are back in a miles per hour instead of kilometers. So, welcome back to America. Welcome to America. We'll show you signs of the buoy. Where are we? We made it to the most northern point of the... <laughs> Lower 48. Lower 48. Or the continental U.S. Well, it was a great ride up here. It's a little wet out here. Definitely bumpy. And getting back into the U.S. side was no border patrol or anything. So we didn't have to show our passports again. So I guess the Canadians can come over to the U.S. whenever they want. Or if you're stuck over on this side, you can go back to Canada whenever you want. Because no one's checking. Yeah. <laughs> they only check when you get back in the U.S. on the other side. Where we came in it. But this place is a nice place. It's a good resort. It has a lot of RVs. So we're going to get some information on if we could bring an RV up here if we wanted to. And, you know, camp out here. Okay, so we made it. You made it. Look so at this. this. This is our third point of the US so far. Yeah. We went to the most eastern part. We went to the most southern part. And now the most northern part. Oh, Next is the most western. Not Alaska included. No, it's part of the continental US. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going towards Russia. <laughs> As you can see, they have RV parking. Some of it looks really long term, but they do have summer rates and they have camping rates of when you can bring your RV. Uh, the matter of you having it long term, I don't know what the rates are. But from what we did find, it is $30 a night to stay here for camping. Uh, it looks like they all have water and electric. And that looks like 
That's how he does his sewer. So there has to be a dump somewhere. But camping $30 a night with a deposit of at least $40. If you want to stay in cabins, you have to have three nights stay yeah. minimum. So when you rent the cabin, they want you to be there for three nights guaranteed. Well, it says $40 per person for the cabins, $40 per person during the summer. And then a cabin for three, it or one of the cabins, one of the cabins hold up to eight people. That eight people is $320 per night. And then they have the uh, marina slips where you can just bring your boat, which we'll show you that sign. Uh, but if you want to have a slip for the year, it, it, for, it is $400 to hold your boat here. And then if it's you just want nightly, it's $3 a night uh, um, for the vehicle. If there's a trailer behind it, it's six, $6 a night. If you want to just launch your boat, it's $10 at a time. But yeah, seasonal rates, not noted um but oh. i think camping right for 30 dollars a night is a pretty good deal oh. well, anything else we'll list it down below yeah and we'll we'll post the link down below of where you can find all this information at young's bay's resort free beer tomorrow. <laughs> we missed it. We missed the free beer. But we're at Jerry's and uh, we're having some lunch. We're going to try some jalapeno poppers, taco salad, and also a chicken sandwich. Very quiet, peaceful, nice view. I like it. And we learned a fun fact that they have icy roads where when it freezes over in December, they'll drive across. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. <laughs> Yep. When that whole lake freezes in December, you can drive across the icy road. To get to the resorts on the other islands. Which is pretty amazing. Now I want to come back in December just to drive on the icy road. And hopefully <laughs> don't fall in. This is how we're getting back into the USA. Okay, that's good. And then once we leave, we have to call. Canada. Let them know that we're back in Canada. It says pending. How's the visit? It was great. We had a lot of fun. And thank you, Jerry's, for the great food. And now it's time to drive out three and a half hours back to Crookston. Well, it'll be fun. It was a real nice visit. Um, we learned a lot. So there is no border patrol, but as you saw in the video, we had to like sign in once we get here on this electrical digital tablet tablet type thing. And then we get to a certain spot. We had to stop, pick up the phone, let them know our passport. Joe's corner. Joe's corner. <laughs> to give them our passport numbers and all that. And then we get to leave. If we don't do this, then we get fined lots of money. I think he said a thousand dollars. Yeah. So our question still is, what happens if you still come here? You don't type your that you're here and then you just leave. Did you ever technically leave Canada? Don't know. <laughs> Let's come. go find Jill's Connor. <laughs> Comment down below. Let us know what you think. If you would get in trouble or not. Because if you don't report back in the U.S. They'll never know that you left. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go find Jill's Corner. Yes. So we're about to log back into Canada. I'm calling Canada. <laughs> in I the rain. To back to the U.S. In the rain. In the rain. We gotta give them our passport information. They got me a hole like it's a busy line. I don't know who else is calling Canada at this time of the day. No. And it's outside. Well, the other thing for going into Canada or going into the US is inside. So Canada wants you to be on the phone outside. I'm doing fantastic. I'm trying to get back in the Canada side so I can go back to the US side so I can get back home. <laughs> 
Good. I am in the U.S. at Joe's Corner. We was driving and I came across this sign. And as you see, that is a population of 44 people in Strat Kona. Never seen such a small population like that before. 44, 44, that's grandma, grandpa, kids and a bunch of grandkids, nobody else. There's a couple of families. I swear there's a couple of families there. Let's continue driving. We don't want to get grandma and grandpa shooting at us. <laughs> well, we made it back safely and we're going to say good night and comment down below. Tell us what you think and make sure that you like this video and subscribe and also ring that bell. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And don't forget to become our Patreon. So we can make more videos like this. <laughs> Until next time. Bye-bye. On the next episode. I mean, $7 for one carload, so you can bring everybody with you. Just stand there and tippy toes. Yeah. Ah. It's kind of amazing how it's crystal clear up here. And then by the time you get down there, it's like all muddy and dirty. We're playing golf? Oh, 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 oh. She's trying to run out of it.